Scotty Reed here with a Black Talk Radio News commentary. On this segment, I want to build upon something that I heard another host on Black Talk Radio uh, say. Um, the host of Tando Radio Show, his name is Dave. Um, I do highly recommend that program, not just because it's on our network, but because of the type of information and the dialogue that is had on his program. But I'm the engineer, the audio engineer of his radio program that's on Monday through Fridays at uh, starting at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And Dave said something that really kind of resonated with me, although he did not frame it in the term of his word usage. He did not frame it in the terms of racism, white supremacy. Um, If you did not know him, you would not know what he was talking about you would just think he was talking about the government a shadow government the people who are in power but it does have applications to towards ending the system of of racism and i'm talking about institutional racism because i don't believe that you can eliminate racism from the hearts of men and women you can't do it that's uh something that they're going to have to come to terms with themselves and and work on themselves perhaps the creator if they had a true relationship uh with the creator then perhaps they could come to grip grips with uh their racism but this is what dave said and i'm kind of paraphrasing it he said that those who are in control of the system We'll call it the system of injustice, the system of racism, although he didn't use those words. But he said those who are in control of the system, the very few who control the lives of the many, he said that they are more dedicated, they are more committed, and they give more of their energy towards maintaining the system than those who are being oppressed by the system. And that just really resonated with me. It made a whole lot of sense to me. And I could just see real life examples of that. And so um, if you are one of those people who are offended whenever you feel like somebody's talking bad about Obama, um, I'm not here to baby you. I'm not here to coddle you. I'm here to try to gain a better understanding of, of what we're dealing with in terms of institutional racism, uh, how to combat it, and hopefully bring it to an uh, end. So if you can't handle those examples, then you should just tune out now. Just stop the video, stop the uh, podcast, and you know go find something else to do. I'm not here to coddle you. Now, today, I believe it was today, Donald Trump. I'm going to compare two speeches given by President Donald Trump and former President Barack Obama in 2015 is when he gave this speech in Des Moines, Iowa. But today, I believe it's in South Carolina is where Liberty University is located. It is a right wing evangelical uh, college or university. I think it was started by Jerry Farwell. But they are a bastion of right wing uh, conservatism and religious uh, conservatism as well. So you can read up about the various controversies that have been attached to that university. But Donald Trump gave a speech to a packed house today. I think they said it was a record 50,000 people who turned out and he was giving a commencement speech. Now, I'm going to read some of this speech to you and just pay attention to the words that Donald Trump said to these young minds, these young uh, people who are going to go out into the world and become part of the system. So I printed out his speech. And so let me just bear with me. Pay attention to the words. okay? so Trump gave the commencement address to Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia this morning, telling the evangelical Christian schools graduates to defy expectations, keep faith in God and fight against established systems. That's very key. What is the most established system in the United States? All right. And and then I should also add, this is a very codified speech as well. Um, To the class of, he says, go forth 
and turn your dreams into action. Unair uncharacteristically, chipper Donald Trump told thousands of young adults today, never stop fighting for what you believe in. To the class of 2017 today, you end one chapter, but you are about to begin the greatest adventure of your life. Just think for a moment of how blessed you are to be here today at this great university, living in this amazing country, surrounded by people who you love and care about so much. Then ask yourself, with all of those blessings and all the blessings and you've been given, what will you give back to this country and indeed to the world? What imprint will you leave in the sands of history? What will future Americans say we did in our brief time right here on Earth? Did we take risks? Did we dare to defy expectations? Did we challenge accepted wisdom and take on established systems? So that's the second time that word is used, uh, established systems. Again, what is the system that has long been established since the founding of this country? A uh, system of slavery and, and uh, racism, race-based slavery is what it was founded on. That's the system that has been established. That's the system that's still in operation all these uh, years later. So he said, he goes on to say, what will future Americans say we did in our brief time right here on earth? Did we take risks? Did we dare to defy expectations? Did we challenge accepted wisdom and take on established systems? Or did we just go along with convention, swim downstream so easily with the current? and just give in because it was the easy way. It was the traditional way or it was the accepted way. Remember this, nothing worth doing ever came easy. It's called the road less traveled. Be unafraid to challenge entrenched interests and fail power structures. The more people tell you it's not possible and can't be done, the more you should be absolutely determined to prove them wrong. Treat the world the word impossible as nothing more than motivation. Relish the opportunity to be an outsider. Embrace that label because it's the outsiders that change the world and make a real and lasting difference. The more a broken system tells you you are wrong or you're wrong, the more certain you should be that you must keep pushing ahead and always have the courage to be yourself. Most importantly, you have to do what you love. You have to do what you love or you most likely won't be very successful at it. So do what you love. Now, this was very, and I'm not sure if this is the entire speech and it was probably a little bit longer than that, but it was some key words uh, said there or some key things that were said there particularly uh, his comments about the established system. Now we have to, what is he talking about? Well, consider who his audience is. Okay, so he is telling them, you know, right now a lot of right-wing conservatives, and a lot of it is, Trump didn't start it, but he fed into it. A lot of these right-wing conservatives are into white victimhood and portraying themselves victims of the system. So we have to consider his audience. He's telling them, don't be wor worried about the PC crowd or what people think about you and you, hey, just go, go ahead and go up against the system, challenge the system and people say you can't do this or do that. Just do it, prove them wrong. Now, this is a very codified speech. Again, this is, you know, he's not using any kind of overtly racist language or, or anything like that. But if we consider the history of that university, if we consider the ideology that comes forth from right wing religious institutions, um, that type of environment, then we know that he's talking about maintaining the system of racism, at least. And even if that's not what he meant, that's what that person would take from it if they have that belief system. That's what they would take from that. So that this was very codified speech for which he got a standing ovation. People have tried to minimize his speech and say it was all cliche and whatnot. But who don't use cliches? You know, hey, it's plenty to criticize this man about. But like I made a post earlier uh, today is a lot of the coverage of Donald Trump from the news media is childish. It, it you know, just um, a lot of name calling, a lot of jokes. 
lot of shucking and jiving and, you know, not a real serious analysis. So the article that I pulled this from tried to make him seem like, oh, you know, uh, he could have came up with a better speech than that. But I found nothing wrong uh, with his speech. If I gave this speech, let's say to HBCU students, and let's say I was Dr. Cornell West, and I was invited to speak, um, give the commencement speech at a university, and Cornell West gave this same speech. Well, based on who Cornell West is and the audience that he's speaking to, those people would take that as challenging the system of racism, working to end the system, not believing that it's impossible to end a racist, oppressive system, not impossible to bring slavery to an end as an institution in this country once and for all. For those new to my channel, 13th Amendment, never abolished slavery. There will be a march on August the 19th on Washington, D.C., a millions for prisoners human rights march. So you can look that up. So that's how, if Cornell West gave this speech, I would say that was a great speech. He he telling them, don't worry about upsetting uh, the status quo. Don't worry about this established system. Don't let it deter you from from fulfilling your goals. Um, and you know, go out there and and challenge this this evil system. So so that's how I'm looking at this. All right. But again, this is Donald Trump. We know how he ran his campaign. Uh, we know uh, the codified and not so codified language that he uses and who he's appealing to, and we know the audience that he's speaking to. Now, let me contrast that with what Barack Obama said about college students on liberal uh, campuses in 2015. Now, first, let me just remind you that the premise of this segment is something that Dave said on Tando Radio Show that made a lot of sense to me. He said, those who are in, and I'm paraphrasing, those who are in control of the system, and I'm going to say uh, racism, who are control, in control of this system, that they give more of their time, their energy, um, they are more committed to maintaining the system more so than the victims of the system. And that's just so very true. Now, many people do accept in the black community that Barack Obama is a quote unquote victim of racism, right? Um, he's given many speeches in his eight years. It depends on, he tailors his message for his audience. Uh, one time he went to a black church and he was bashing black males, talking about they all mission, missing in action, missing black fathers, even though that's fake news that the, uh, um, um, the that the white males are the ones we want to look at the uh, stats. If we want to look at statistics from the CDC, white males are known more for abandonment of their children than black male. Okay, black males were the least to to uh, uh, abandon their children. So you know, then he gave a speech to. Um, where he gave another speech where, well, he was talking to the uh, Congressional Black Caucus and, you know, they were trying to get an agenda push for, quote unquote, black America, their constituents. And they were complaining about what I gathered. They were complaining about he wasn't doing anything to help their constituents. And he talked to, he talked down to them and told them to stop complaining and take your bedroom slippers off and put your marching shoes on. That's what he, that's what he said. Now, this is what he told a white, a primarily white audience in white Iowa, uh, Des Moines, Iowa, which I believe is their capital. So let me, let me read this again. The whole premise of this segment is to to build on what Dave said about, and I'm, you know, again, he didn't use this language. This is my language, but it's applicable. So he's saying that races are more com committed to maintaining the system more so than victims are in dismantling the system. And if you check my video out last night, you know, we kind of talked about that. Black people supporting Confederate mon monuments, you know, like Condi Rice uh, said on Fox and Friends, please check out that video. Um, but in Condi Rice's name does come up in this, this little piece. So let me read. 
uh, to you. This is from 2015. From 2015, President Obama is weighing in on a discussion over political dialogue on college campuses, saying students shouldn't be coddled from opposing views. So he basically saying they shouldn't be baby. Like I'm not going to baby uh, those people who just simply cannot accept objective criticism of their president. All right, that's what they said. That's my president. But anyway, it's not just sometimes folks who are mad that colleges are too liberal and that have a problem, that have a problem. Sometimes there are folks on college campuses who are liberal and maybe even agree with me on a bunch of issues who sometimes aren't listening to the other side. And that's a problem too. So he white explaining. He white explaining for conservatives. He white explaining for racist suspects. I've heard uh, Obama said this during a town hall on Monday in Des Moines, Iowa. So this is from 2015. I've heard of some college campuses where they don't want to have a guest speaker who is too conservative or they don't want to read a book if it has language that is offensive to African Americans or somehow sends a demeaning signal towards women, Obama continued. I've got to tell you, I don't agree with that either. I don't agree that you, when you become students at colleges, have to be coddled and protected from different points of view, he said. A uh, debate over sensitivity on college campuses has garnered and these are the writers speaking here, uh, the, putting it in context of the speech. Debate over, the, putting the speech in the context, excuse me. Debate over sensitivity on college campuses has garnered increased attention recently, including over, let me see, including over trigger warnings for course material, safe spaces on campuses. They talking about safe black spaces and, and college campuses, uh, black students and their allies um, um, addressing this racist symbology and um, uh, monuments to racist white supremacist slavers and terrorists. All right, so uh, that's what they talking about when they talking about safe spaces on campuses and, and boycotts of prospective campus speakers such as Condoleezza Rice. So, yeah, a lot of people don't want to hear Condoleezza Rice uh, saying that we shouldn't get rid of these monuments and because it's part of history and we need statutes of terrorists and, and slavers to remind us of slavery. You know, uh, uh, so again, check out the video for more context from last night or yesterday. Uh, comedians Jerry Seinfeld and Bill Maher, Bill Maher have also blasted oversensitivity of college students. See, I was just talking about that today, that a lot of the childish media that is targeting, quote unquote, liberals or the left wing or progressive and a lot of black people tune in to those type of uh, stations because there's a lack of independent black media or media controlled by black people given our point of view um, about the comedians of Samantha B, uh, Stephen Colbert, uh, John Stewart, even though he's retired now and has been uh, replaced by Trevor Noah and, and they mentioned Jerry Seinfeld. So it's like it says uh, this last quote from Obama, anybody who comes to speak to you and you disagree with, you should have an argument with them. Now, I'm going to stop right there. No, you shouldn't, because that's not the setting for that. OK, when somebody comes to give a speech, they're not there to argue with the audience. They there to give a speech and the audience is there to listen. Unless it's a press conference and they have a, a question and answer session afterwards, then no, that's not a time to have an argument uh, with these people. And I wouldn't even use the word argument. I would say debate. All right. He then says, but you shouldn't silence them by saying you can't come because I'm too sensitive to hear what you have to say. Something like I just said about a lot of people who, who are Obama fans or Obama fanatics and that's their president. And how dare you say something about my president? Yeah, I just said that at the beginning of the, of the program, right? So, you know, I'm not here to baby you either, but he is demeaning these students. All right. 
and and claim, oh, they just overly sensitive if they don't want to hear racist propaganda, whether it's coming out the mouths of, of racist white people or proxy racist black people like Condoleezza Rice, tools of the racist system. Oh, you should, you're so sensitive, uh, you can't handle different points of view. You ain't hear Donald Trump telling them white kids that at Liberty University, did you? You didn't hear him telling them that he told them, you know, don't, you know, challenge these people, challenge it, you know. So uh, this is just, it's sick to me. And it's a perfect illustration of how suspected racists are more committed, or will say white supremacists are more committed to maintaining the system of white supremacy than victims are of of ending that system. This is perfect compare and contrast. And this is what I think Dave was getting at. Those people in control give more of their energy, which can also be their money, because it, like Dave says, when you own a job, you're using energy and then they pay you money. So that money represents your energy. And they give more of their energy, they are more committed to maintaining the system, to maintaining these confederate monuments and tributes to racists and, and uh, slavers than a lot of victims are to overthrowing the system, ending the system, dismantling white supremacy. And I think this is a perfect uh, illustration of that. Listen, we live in an age of information. These kids, these children, wow, these young people, these young men and women on these college campuses know exactly who these people are. They know who Condoleezza Rice is. They've heard their point of views on Fox News and, and other media that they have been on. They've read about them. They know what these people's thoughts are, okay? And if, if the majority of the students on their campus don't want uh, um, racist talking points being promoted on their campus then guess what that's their right it's not that they're little babies perhaps they're anti-racist and they are intolerant of racism see this is Barack Obama telling them they need to be tolerant of people with racist views people with misogynistic views he's telling them even though Rush Limbaugh uh, calls women sluts on air Oh, you shouldn't be offended by that. Let Rush Limbaugh come and give the commencement speech at your college or, or whatnot. Dude, don't protest it. You being a baby. You see what I'm saying? Am I making my point here? Am I really making my point? Because that's all I'm trying to do is get you to think about um, the, what Dave said. Or, you know, language that is offensive to African American. Oh, you shouldn't be offended if somebody call you the N-word or or if it's a, a Mein Kampf or something like that. Hitler's uh, book, autobiography or whatever. Oh, you shouldn't be offended by that. You shouldn't want that banned from college campuses or you shouldn't be forced to read it because it's promoting a racist ideology. See what I'm saying? See what Dave is saying. Even though... Dave did not frame it in the context of white supremacy. It still applies. He's just codified like that. Codified meaning that he doesn't need to say racism. He doesn't need to say white supremacy. His audience knows what he's talking about. Those people in control and their puppets and their proxy racist uh, tools. So... This is why I said, you know, I made the video last night about Condole Condoleezza Rice's, uh, um, you know, uh, supporting Confederate monuments and saying we need them. Like, we don't have history books. Stick them in their Confederate museum. They got some of those in Virginia uh, where Trump spoke today, okay? Or in South Carolina where Dylan Roof went to uh, visit. Uh, shortly before he murdered all those people in Emmanuel Church. If we don't want it in the public square, something our tax dollars are maintaining, then we don't want it. We want to dismantle the system. And that includes the shrines to racists. Again, I got to bring this up. You don't see anything like uh, uh, statues of Hitler in Germany. 
You don't see them in the United States. You don't see taxpayers being forced to lionize or or give places of honor to Nazis. You know why? Because Jews wouldn't have it. Jews have self-respect. Their descendants have self-respect. And they will protest it or do whatever it takes to dismantle that. Just like when the uh, college students were pulling down that statue of Cecil Rhodes in South Africa. We had black people saying, oh, they oh, they shouldn't do that. They need those monuments to remind them of the, of the history. Jews don't, Jews have a campaign that's called Never Forget. But they don't seem to need um, Nazi monuments to remind them of that Holocaust. All right? So I don't want to rent. If you have any thoughts or comments you would like to share, I put stuff out there for public debate and peer review. I won't be offended or get angry if you share your thoughts with me, as long as you're respectful. All right, so this has been Scotty Reed with a Black Talk Radio News commentary. Support independent media today. Make a donation to the nonprofit Black Talk Media Project. Uh, the uh, PayPal link will be in the description. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to us on Black Talk Radio Network's Facebook page or on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter at Black Talk Radio.